Hi, is this the Elmer Police Department? This is the Elmer Borough Police Department. Are you calling in reference to McJugger Nugget? Well, I have a question. I just come home from work. Both of my children watch this guy okay. on TV. Let me, let me, before you even start. Jesse. Yeah. What's up, man? It's Brian. Hey. Oh. <laughs> oh, hey. Doc I, guy, right? Hi, Doc guy. How yeah. you doing, man? Brian. Brian, yep. How are you, man? Good. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm starting to shoot from the beginning here. Is that cool? I can... You're recording right now? Is that, is that okay? No, that's fine. Okay. Dude, this is the first thing that I've ever done where, like, somebody's coming to my life and, like, video or anything. Why'd you let me? It seemed innocent enough. And I, you know, I'm getting kind of lonely out here. And you seem like a good guy through the email. So I was like, yeah, sure, you can come out. My name is Brian Spitz and I'm a documentary filmmaker. I first interviewed YouTube celebrity Jesse Ridgway, AKA McJuggernuggets for my YouTuber 24 interview series. Jesse became one of YouTube's biggest stars when he debuted his Psycho series in 2012. The Psycho Series is a YouTube show where Jesse, an unemployed gamer living at home, is constantly harassed by his angry father to get a job. His dysfunctional family struck a chord with millions of viewers, making him one of the most popular YouTube personalities in the world. His YouTube channel has more subscribers than the New York Times. He has more views than The Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, and Homeland combined. And this year, more people watched Jesse's channel than the Super Bowl. Jesse portrayed his YouTube channel as his real life. Nothing fake, nothing staged. 100% real. But shortly after my interview with Jesse, this happened. You made me this way! Jesus fucking Christ, Jesse, what are you doing? Back the fuck up! And then, this happened. Do not forget to keep it rigid. That's it, everyone. That's a wrap. Sweet, we're done? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Where's Dad at? He's right here. I love you, Dad. I love you, too. This Psycho Series finale implies Jesse's entire life on YouTube was fake. Was his whole family faking with him? Was everything staged? I was fascinated with what Jesse had pulled off and maybe a little bitter about the character he faked for my YouTuber 24 interview. So I raced back to his hometown. I had to get his first real interview now that the series was over. I needed to find out who this Jesse Ridgway really is and what else he might be hiding. His car, his car is here. He's gotta be here. It's six cars here. Alright. Larry's house is somewhere around here. Jesse's uncle Larry lives down the street. I met him during my YouTuber 24 interview. Hey, so Uncle Larry. Remember Brian, YouTuber 24? Oh yeah. How's it going? Good. Good to see you. What's all this about? Oh, we just uh, we just got in town. We're just kind of looking for Jesse. He's not calling me. He's not texting me. 
We're just trying to get a, like, a quick interview with him. Aren't you in town because the whole thing ended? Yeah, and... I mean, try to contact him. Don't just go over his house, though. Okay. I mean, that's not cool. You think it'd be... Okay, all right. Yeah. We want to get back to playing. Okay. All right. Thanks, Uncle Larry. Yeah. All right. Back to Jesse's. Jesse wasn't coming out, and I wasn't leaving without an interview. I had an idea. My cameraman, Brennan, brought a drone. Don't call me fucking Uncle Larry. I'm not your fucking uncle. All right, dude, we're just I'm more trying to get Jesse to come out. For like with a minutes. drone. You're trying to talk to him with a drone? You won't come out. And you won't cameras? I'm sorry, you won't answer my text. Okay, we're won't... tired of all this fucking harassment. You guys got to get out of here, all right? Just get, get all right. in your van. Get out of here. All right, all right. All right. I texted Jesse and told him that if he really wouldn't talk to us, we were going to pack up and leave. Wow. I didn't even think you'd get back to me. Jesse just texted me. He's actually agreeing for us to come through with the crew and talk to him and sit down with him for one hour. All right, we got to get going. Let's do this. One billion views later, I would be the first to get the truth behind this psycho series. We are in. There is my juggernaut. Jesse? Yeah, you got a full crew. Got a little crew. Are you, are you rolling right now? Yeah, is that okay? We're just... Yeah, no, that's fine. Damn, man, you had me fooled. I, this is a lot more professional than I thought. You had me fooled, my friend. <laughs> we got some stuff I want to talk yeah. to you about. That's all right. We had a lot of people trying to catch us, but never. Yeah, a fucking drone? Really? You want to come out? You want to answer my text? You want to do this in my bedroom? Uh, yeah. All right, you guys wanna bring tripods in here? Set up a light? All right, so if you could just, when I ask you a question, you just look right into the lens and just direct your answers there. Okay. You lied to millions of people over the years online. Tell me why that's okay. I never lied. I was playing a character throughout. I was not myself, it was acting. It's not a lie. I never lied once. But you portrayed it as real life, so people thought it was real. Is that okay? That is correct. Uh, I don't think there was anything wrong with it. So why should I now believe you're gonna tell the truth? Because I am done with the series. The videos were fake. It's finished, so Whatever questions you got, I'll answer. Tell me about growing up in this neighborhood. <laughs> this neighborhood, it's not, there's no neighborhood. It's, it's fields, it's corn, it's cows. It, I refer to it as East Bumblefuck. There's maybe like a few hundred people around here. I've lived in this house my whole life, born and raised, 23 years, spent a lot of time in my room, playing with stuffed animals and imagining stories and characters and playing a lot of video games. Jesse, for the better part of his life, was a, a kind of like short and chubby kid. Our relationship was more or less like a stereotypical sibling rivalry. I was the older brother. I would always beat him up. He was a younger brother. He would always start shit. If I'm being perfectly honest, my father and I both have uh, angry tempers, I guess, um, which I attribute mine to getting from him. And as far as him, I don't know where he got that from.
Jesse is a kid. Love video games. As you can tell by the videos, he, you know, the, the grand scheme of things was all about video games and things like that and not wanting them to play. He always had a video camera, so yeah, we were probably captured many years ago in videos. And he loved videos and his brother loved videos. Our son, Georgie, and JT were in kindergarten together. Growing up, he was always very persuasive. He always wanted to film everything. First one I remember is the campground. We went camping all the time. At the yeah. campground, it was raining, and he had to get the... Storm the, was coming. Storm was yeah. coming, and he got the camera all psyched. You know that big tower thing by my camper? Yeah. Go touch it. And made it look like that he got electrocuted. So when did you get into YouTube? I started YouTube in 2006 when the platform was pretty new. I was a young kid and I said, hey, this sounds pretty neat. Let me check it out. I could make a video and upload it and people could actually watch it across the world. I offered, hey, I'm down for being in videos if you want me to be in them. Maybe you need somebody else to act in them. And he said, sure. What was the name of that video? Uh, fishing on the 4th of July, which I was 14 in that. I'll be able to catch fish in that. You cannot. Oh, oh, guess you're wrong, all right? <laughs> I am never wrong. <laughs> Jesse liked to tell stories. It was very good. I'm surprised he didn't write a book instead of uh, this, but. He would be directing and then acting in everything. Code 45 and two zigzags, baby, that's all we need. We're looking at the trick to treats, and I'm your host, Tony Trevorelli. And we can make more clones as we see fit, and more guns as we need them. And then it started to become more serious, and then people started to make a lot of money and become celebrities, and I was like, this might be my best shot. I've had a lot of inspirations uh, over the years growing up. I love the show Lost, I love Breaking Bad, Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, Prison Break. I found that with YouTube, it is the only platform that I had. There wasn't much being done in regards to storytelling and, and serious storytelling. The Psycho series started as a parody, actually. Uh, there were freak out videos, there's a freak out genre um, that was loosely tapped. My mom just canceled my brother's uh, World of Warcraft account and he is freaking out. <laughs> Who drank my motherfucking mountain dew? You sons of bitches! Oh, they got the guy in there! I made the first video, Psycho Dad Destroys Xbox, as a joke. I wanted to basically go really over the top with my dad and have him break a console. December 22nd, 2012 is when I was drugging to YouTube. I don't remember the conversation we had where it was like, hey, do you like want to film and like be a dickhead and like watch dad come in through my Xbox and destroy it in the fireplace and outside? What? Nothing. Wait, no. Shit, shit, shit. And it was just a joke, one-off video. Then people thought it was real, and I'm just like, why? <laughs> this isn't real. Why would how, I was overacting? I was screaming like a little bitch. How could you possibly think that was legitimate? And it got like a million views, but it was a slow burn, maybe after about a year. I was like, let me do a follow-up. The first viral, I guess that was the uh, shredding. I think that was the biggest. Now, if I was to sell these all to GameStop, I'd probably only get maybe $10. So why not turn these into bigger profit on YouTube so that's going to destroy these and should at least make me $10.
Jesse uh, had the idea of running over video games out in the yard. I'm never gonna quit playing! And it wasn't until Psycho Dad Shreds video games went viral. 32 million views, I think it's up to now, where I was like, I need to conceptualize a story around this. If people are still buying this after I'm, you know, ripping off my clothes and, and, and screaming to the heavens. <laughs> if people are gonna buy that, let's see how far we can take it. So I came up with this story. I set an end date, and I fleshed out some characters, and made the Psycho series. Here you go, f***ing camera! What the f***? Oh. Yeah, come here, it's yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> 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 oh. no. You're not part of the family the way you act. More or less, it seemed like the uh, Psycho series, all the videos were in the millions very quickly. In the beginning, I wasn't in it that much. It was mostly Jeff and Jesse. I didn't like lying. I don't like lying at all. Um, I was raised not to lie, so. But I, I guess Jesse pretty much persuaded me, like he always does. How did he do that? Uh, he's a good talker. He got to a storyline that intrigued me because he got kicked out of his house. I got kicked out of the house literally like 30 minutes ago. Thank you, first of all, for letting me stay. Mm -hmm. I don't even care what the conditions are as long as I have a place, you know? You and your camera. It's always got to be there, huh? That's how I came into this whole story. Then all of a sudden, he, get, he starts getting a little taste of it, gets involved in a video, and then ever since, he's been hook, line, and sinker. He's in. Mm -hmm. You want to go over all the movements first? But this is bullshit! Everybody, you know, at some point in their life, you, me, everybody, has had their moments with their fathers or whatever that you sit there and think that they're psycho. And I think that's where it was actually born. I don't think they were anything real about it, because, I, you know, if you're, if you're talking about the psycho character, the psycho dad, I don't, you know, in, in my opinion, I, I wouldn't be out there damaging my uh, kid's stuff. There's other ways to handle it. I've wanted to bust my son's shit plenty of times, so I think there's a lot of people out there like that. Not many people in our extended family liked the idea of these videos when they started. They, a lot of them actually had very strong opinions about it, not positive ones. <laughs> so I would watch his videos, believe it or not, with no sound, because I knew he was saying the F word. I looked at them with the sound off. <laughs> which is a little kind of hard to understand what's going on, but that's what I did. Because it feels like too real, and our family is not like that. I don't even remember when Jesse said. He just asked if I could come over one day with his mother, be at Larry's camper, be her best friend, which I always am, act like I'm drunk. I'm not sorry, your dad's funny. an ass. He's an ass. He's been an ass. Your mom deserves better. My whole personality came out that night that I was a drunk, mean bitch. <laughs> Wrong that shit. Hey, play your fucking shit. How about that, motherfucker? What the fuck? You want to try to get it away from me? Yeah, well, I will get it away from oh, you. Oh, no, you want to. Tell you what, oh, I ain't no. messing around. That's my shit get from Christmas. How about that? You're always so demanding. You think you're going to out that? She's not an actual bitch. She's a nice lady, all right? Oh, She's, oh, yeah. oh, there you go. I, I, I don't know. Uh, uh. I, think, I think she's pretty much in character, actually. Oh. That's what I mean. <laughs> I'm really dating Jesse. We've been dating for almost three years in September. We met on Tinder. He wasn't, like, huge on YouTube at that time. Um, I think he had maybe started his first psycho video. I would see her maybe once every two to three weeks, which is hard. I'd see her for a couple days. I needed a video every single day. And I started to be a little bit like, that's fine, like, that's cool, but I don't want you coming and doing videos every day, like, with me and them. This is Juliet's first official psycho. 
I'm gonna run us through everything. This ain't theater. This is like real shit. So just act like it's real. It's, it's not like, oh my god, your dad's crazy. It's like, holy shit, your dad's fucking crazy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Got it. <laughs> Good shit. Oh, Mario. Yeah. You remember when I used to have this? What the fuck are you doing, Dad? After the first video went viral, a lot of my friends started noticing him online on Facebook and stuff. They were like, are you dating him? Your boyfriend's insane. Why are you with this guy? What do you see in him? Jesse soon recruited one of his best friends to help with filming part-time. Corn's gonna be our uh, cameraman for mobile. Back, yep, yeah. that is true, yes. Corn's job is more than just to film. He's the eyes and ears of the audience. Jeffrey comes out and he's just like, what the fuck is going on here? Corn, you're kind of gonna position yourself so you can just pivot, like maybe around right where this hose thing is, so you can pivot, get Jeffrey reaction, and get Uncle Larry in the window here. And nobody really cares about anything besides Corn for getting a good shot. You are the audience right now. This is station one. Okay, so me and Corn are gonna do our opening. We're gonna come out here, and I would like you in this, you can right at the doorway. Let's see. I'll give a little knock, you immediately come out. Toys in. He had the story already in his mind. And then you take it here, grab the hammer, smash it, smash it, smash it, smash it to the point where you're really satisfied with this destruction. I have in my hands the Psycho Series secret formula. The formula states three minutes to four minutes and 30 seconds for a perfect viral video. Let's put it in Psycho Dad Shreds video games terms. The hook was me saying, fuck, where's all my video games? Get the suspense, Jesse's running out, Jeffrey's running out to follow. Then we got the conflict, see Dad and Jesse arguing over the games with the dangle the whole time. The games are just sitting there, hostage situation, gun to the head, oh my gosh. Let me just say, this isn't film school, this is all my own shit, all right? To make it look real, it couldn't be broke up, had to be in one take. It could take two takes, it could take 12 takes. I believe that my personal record is around about 15. Hold on, wait, what did you just say? Liquor store in Melissa's. Stop, no. Why wouldn't you know why I'm going there? Stop. Tell me the truth. Stop. He was very thorough. Too much cheek. Decent. So you can go lighter, but more, like right? Ah! Right here. I can I get this side yeah, now? But, but, this side really hurts. Right here. Right here. Like, I'm doing with your, that. With your... <clears throat> this is called aim listening on a slap well, so we're doing. Oh no, my slap sounds so much better than that. You got too much air. Shh, shh. That's the one. Uh, there's a lot of times I'd come home and I'd be pissy from, you know, mowing lawns, and then uh, Jess will say, I need a video tonight, and uh, then I'd get a little pissy and. But we didn't end up doing it. No, it's not gonna be. I'm. Uh, fuck. No, no. Why'd you say fuck? You wanted one in the. No. Because you said, is it gonna be different? I know, and that's okay if you're, you're a little. It's, it's too late now. Fuck. That was so fucking good. Fuck. There was a lot of pressure. Jesse, as a as a producer slash the script guy, every you no know, does everything. He put that pressure upon us to you know, be very professional and, you know, get it right. If you're gonna fake cry, you need to fake cry. Like, you need to cry. Like, don't, like, if, if you're gonna try and tackle that, you need to go 110%. We're not actually actors, and we're just doing this for the fun of it, I guess, and to help him. I legitimately need you to keep a steady shot while I film this. It's steady. No, like, steady enough. Like, a, like a static shot, I'm serious. <sighs> By this time, we'll have like five million subscribers. And, and honestly, we're creating a huge brand for ourselves. I want this to be as professional as possible. Sometimes I felt like I was dating two different people. There is a person inside of him when he takes on the director mode that's super adamant about getting what he wants. You know what, he's not feeling good, okay? Whoa, well, mom, 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 mom! Stop, fuck! You're not doing this part yet. What are you doing? How did you feel about Jesse sort of portraying this series as real life? So it was kind of hard for me to grapple with the fact that he was essentially lying. When you're watching TV, you know going in that it's probably going to be fake. But on YouTube, when you portray it with tweets, with Facebook, with all this stuff, like it's real, kids are going to believe that. I've had 
a couple times I've been approached, is it real? And I've lied. And I didn't like it. But I wasn't going to be one to, to spill the beans. It's hard work covering all your tracks, and you kind of lose your mind, especially I've been doing, what, like two to three uploads per day. I was worried about people finding out and the repercussions of that. I think our first real big instance of that was Psycho Kid Gets You Rested. We had uh, one of my dad's friends, Ken, dress up as a cop bought the uh, costume online. Get off me! Get off me! <laughs> Everybody called us out and said, that's not a real cop. That's a fake cop. They were pulling up the, they had the Halloween costume on the internet. They were tweeting it to me. This is a fake cop. The cop uniform is obviously just a costume. You got me, Mash. But Mash, lay off, man. You say you're a big fan, but you're trying to defame me right now. Yeah, Don't be that guy. Yeah. We work hard. How are you making your money? And so I came up with this idea where it was a scared straight program. My dad orchestrated it. Luckily, my mom knew how a fake, fake cry. She's like, I'm sorry, but, but your father set the cop up. Your dad, he's seen some of those, uh, you know, those scared straight. Are programs. you fucking kidding me? Oh, yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening right now. Dude, just hear me out. We came up with this bullshit, this scared straight program, and it was always planned that the therapy... Oh, my gosh, yes, this is my Aunt Robin, guys. That's our therapist. Let's look at this creative shot we're doing over the shoulder so nobody can find her through Facebook and whatnot. And uh, we actually got away with it. And I've been obsessing too much over the exposed people. I, I, I do care about the integrity of the series. I don't want people to think I'm this this uh, this liar. Your whole family's a bunch of scammers. From from uh, your brother to your to your nephew to your other nephew, all scammers. We had another instance of damage control where uh, Psycho Dad busts down door, and we decided to remove the pins completely. We have to put little wimpy pieces of wood in there because. It's like your dad's getting kind of old and we don't want him to get hurt. You're not coming in here, the door is locked. Holy shit! Holy fucking Holy shit! Fuck your dad! Dad, what the fuck? But then everybody's like, how the hell did he just kick the door down? That, that doesn't make logical sense. And so we decided to set it up where I find these door pins. What the fuck are you doing? What the hell is that? Remember our open door policy? It was all set up so my dad could get in there and take down the door. Every place I went, everybody was asking about the videos. I kept my head down all the time because you never know who's looking at you funny, saying, oh, good, look, there's that psycho bastard that broke his kid's stuff. The story happened, but the story's not real, I guess. It's, it's fiction, is what I'm trying to say. Everything on television is the same way. I mean, we put it on the show. How did you get them to do all this? It started and ended as a love. However, to cover my own ass, I had them sign a contract. <laughs> What's the actual story with Corn? Well, uh, he did actually quit the prison. He's working for me now. I don't know if we talked about this at all, but uh, we struck up a contract. We had a contract previously. Uh, he was getting paid to film with me, but now it's like super legit. He's locked in for two years, making some serious money as my cameraman. We did have a contract, as a matter of fact. And uh, I remember when I signed it and everything, and it was like, wow. Just signed a contract. I don't know what that means, but other than that, I have to be in Jesse's videos till he's done. It was kind of weird because, like, he's family. Here's how it is one meal every other month at a restaurant. That's how he got us. That's it? Yeah. But yeah, he had contracts, and it stated in there that we would be uh, going to dinner every other month. And they kind of lacked towards the end. Jesse definitely got to a point where it was obsessive and where I started to question like whether I would want to spend my life with somebody who is a workaholic. We're like triple, quadruple stacking today in videos. This is my one free time and I'm actually filming during my free time. The whole day I couldn't stop thinking about YouTube, I couldn't stop thinking about the business, I couldn't stop thinking about the series, I couldn't stop thinking about, I can't stop thinking about it. I'm obsessed and it's probably not good, or maybe it is a great thing. I always came back to the fact that in my creativity and what I want to do, if I had the opportunity to do that 24 seven and make my career out of it, make money out of it, I would take it. He lived, ate, breathed Psycho Series. He had once said to me that this is the one, like something that he cares about more than anything. Uh, when we started out, there was one video per month, and then it got to one, one video every couple weeks, and then, and then he progressed into two videos or two uploads a day. We had a huge family meeting one night, and I was forced into getting like a job job. 
Jesse worked here, and his character did a few things that he wasn't supposed to do. All right, that's not a good idea. I don't think manual labor is Jesse's forte. What are you, what are you guys doing? Uh, we're having a break. Nobody even come in here and hide somewhere and eat on their first date. <laughs> oh. He, it, uh... It's only temporary. Yeah. Jesse worked at Tony's Treats. And I guess he licked the ice cream machine or something. She's getting phone calls, and I guess she's, she figured she didn't sign up for that. And uh, she, uh, she said that he ruined her business. I think it's disgusting. Dude was licking all up on the equipment. That ain't cool, man. Apparently, this place has been reported to the health board like over 100 times in the last week. Does he care? No, because the money keeps rolling in. What the fuck? I can't even go to a fucking business without you guys calling the business or leaving negative reviews and comments on Google reviews, on Yelp, on fucking TripAdvisor. You guys are ruining businesses. This is upsetting to me, and it makes me look really bad. Um, real me, I'm talking about real me. Not that you guys care, or, or not, I don't know. <laughs> Jesse came to the farm the Monday after Easter. My kids were home from school, I was at home. He asked if he could shoot the video, and I said yes. I didn't know him before he knocked on the door that day. I just kind of thought it was a little nuts from the start. I've never had a, anything physical with my children, you know? They weren't, they might have got their rear end smacked once or twice in their whole lives. And Jesse brought Uncle Chris in to play that role. I had seen some of the series. I don't think Jeff would go as far as I was willing to go. But we're gonna play you guys off as like a good cop, bad cop type thing. Um, he's and I'm the mean nice. guy and you're the nice guy. So I, yeah. I should make you muffins or something? What the fuck is that? Huh? That's the camera. What's that? What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? What? Uncle okay, Chris, okay, okay. You gotta I don't know if I can climb this. Well, I got an idea. <laughs> are you kidding? Hey! When I grabbed Jesse, I know it really pissed my brother off. Need to bring the truck in? OK. Oh, all right. All right. Are we going to drop this guy in the car? We're going to need him to work, right? Uh, he looked at me, and he goes, you don't like me doing that. I said, no, I don't like anybody manhandling my kids. And I said, I don't care how old they are. I said, I don't like people touching them. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay. He was ready to pick up for Jesse because it is his son. And, you know, and he says, oh, I'm just acting. I said, yeah, I know that. But it's still, as a parent, you look at somebody else, you know, touching your child, you know, you want to crack him. My friend was scrapping his Montero. Uh, I said, hey, man, could I have it? And I bought it off him for $300, because I figured I'd make a few thousand off the video. The setup of the uh, Psycho Dad Rex car, originally it was designed that we were going to drop a massive oak tree on top of the car that was parked over on the side of the driveway. Hey! Oh, shit. My car here. Holy shit. Tree stopped about five foot above the car. So then he came up with the idea that we would move it over and then ended up, I would throw, I think, an Xbox through the back window. Your mom? You won't take your mom? Yeah. That didn't work properly, the first take. So then just uh, pieced that one back together. And then the second take, it finally did go through the window. Yeah! That's that! Holy, Holy shit. fuck. Then we commenced to bust, bust the living hell out of all the windows in the car. And Holy shit! What the oh. That was actually my only first uh, cut or scratch when it caught me above the eye with a piece of glass. His parents would let him do whatever he wanted to do because they knew he was going to make it. If he wanted to break the back door, they broke the back door. Well, bust out your fucking door! My favorite episode would probably be uh, Psycho Kids Burying. My dad is burying all my brother's video games with the backhoe. Holy shit. Holy shit, I gotta go. And then we cut it in such a way that Jesse got buried by dirt. What the fuck? Is he moving? Holy shit. Holy shit. Dude. Dude, are you all right? Dude! Holy fuck! What the fuck? He was kind of of the mindset that he could die tomorrow as long as the story gets told the way he wanted. Now, this video is extremely risky because this is probably our probably most ridiculous one yet. 
If there is a fire, then we go grab the bucket and then put it out. Okay, remember, smothering fire is always good, so got a big blanket. If you see something really going after Susan ends, throw it on. Put down the fucking Roman candle! Yeah, that's the intensity. Drop it right now! I can rest easy because that's another one down, but we know what's to come is this is only gonna get more intense. I never had a problem, you know, pushing my dad to to do a certain stunt or to do something for the story. The story always came first. So when his health came up and he had to go dive off this deck, I know he had a problem with it. So your dad actually has a legitimate hernia. We came up with this idea to try and work this into the reality of the story. He's going into surgery in a few days. We had him jump off the deck, make it seem like he fell off the deck at Aunt Jackie's house. Him and I had an argument prior to about, you know, he's killing me and things like that. There you go. Try and stand up. Yeah. Try and stand up. Oh. You good? I never want to put one of my family members, you know, in this uncomfortable position, but I have to tell the story. First, just, just FYI, any other time you need surgery, we have to be the first. Oh, there you go, Jace. Tall surgery. There was the Psycho Dad Demolishes gaming room where me and Corn are literally inside a makeshift room in the Morton building while my dad tears it to pieces with a backhoe. This is one we can't redo, and it's all live. I, that's part of the reason why we wanted to do it live. It's like, we got to do it all in one anyway. We might as well do it live. That's a few thousand dollars, uh, or even the trailer. I mean, I paid 13 grand. So I'm writing Uncle Larry a check today for like 13K and gonna buy, uh, buy the RV off him so we can destroy it. That's a lot of pressure. You know, that's extreme gambling. So there is a lot of money floating around. You have to do the math. A, a thousand views is a dollar. Simple as that. A million views is a thousand dollars. You put, the, put your money down on the table. I'm gonna put a trailer down on this one. And hopefully, you know, I get blackjack and then I get a second trailer back. We needed to raise the stakes. And um, my uncle went into a fucking pool. Like, who does that? We're not professionals, we're, we're family. When he did that, he was ready to die, like no joke. We were going to dedicate the series to him. Rest in peace, Uncle Harry. I said yes immediately as soon as as soon as Jeff said it. I probably had a few beers and I was like, hell yeah, I'll do it. And I didn't have any any thoughts about it until actually the day of it. My dad wanted to get rid of the pool. Um, Cause it's I think got a he went, holes in it. Because he wanted a new one. And he said, what better way than <laughs> kill Uncle Larry in it? Yeah. The reason this is also important was not only is it pool destruction, but it's attempted murder on Psycho Dad, which is then going to prompt Jesse to see that from his mentor and be like, oh, let me finish what you started. We're aiming at around 40 miles per hour, no brakes. It's a super crazy stunt. This might be our craziest stunt yet. 35. Oh, it's 35, 35 Yeah, we compromised. Yeah. Oh, compromised. And then all of a sudden, his dad started having anxiety, thinking I'm going to die hitting this pool. I had already told Jesse I was going to sell out, go as fast as I possibly could. So he started putting all this anxiety on me, and I was like, but then again, I had like six beers, and I didn't give a shit. Hey, turn that GoPro on. All right. Um, and then, yeah, Cloud's gonna hit in a second. Um, I'll sh you'll, you'll begin the go text very soon. There's always this um, point of no return in a psycho video, and that's like as soon as, say, like the axe hits the laptop or, or Uncle Larry runs into the swimming pool, that's the point of no return. So, like, we can, I can say stop beforehand. So, if we fuck up before then, we have to catch ourselves. Jesse, would you just open the fucking gate? I don't understand how hard that is. Just open the gate. 
Uh, uh, stop. We're gonna restart. Open the gate up, please. Shit, I already have it in my pocket. We're gonna restart. Fuck. Did you open the gate up? I mean, I, my goodness, how long does it take to open this fucking gate? I just don't, I just don't think it's a good at Fuck, stop. It's challenging to get it all one take. You might want to come outside for this. What? Come outside for what? I... He was extremely nervous uh, going into that pool, Uncle Larry, and um, it's just, it's a wild stunt. To watch that back and to see that splash of water is just so insane. Um, he even had a GoPro in the grill of a first person view of that. It's wild. That was fucking amazing. <laughs> that was fucking yeah. amazing. He's alive. He's alive. He's good. He's good. That, that was, was fucking theater wet. Uh, yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. Like, oh my god. god. Like, Damn. That was pretty cool. I want to do it again. <laughs> you're so you're literally fine. Fucking nothing. <laughs> that is an adrenaline rush. Yeah, Let me right? tell you guys. Not that I recommend it at home. Please, yeah. nobody try this at home. This is this is why we do the Psycho Series, so we can feel alive. That's a that's all it is. That's it. Oh my god! Look! Focus, damn you! One million subscribers! <laughs> That's a big box. 36 pounds. <laughs> da, 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 da. Dear McJuggernauts, you're bigger than Vancouver. You're bigger than Venice. One million subscribers. Maybe you imagined that day for a long time. Oh, eight or nine years. Or maybe you never thought you'd grow so big. Also true. Either way, not much can match the satisfaction of finding out that your creativity, oh my God, I'm tearing up, that your ideas, <laughs> that your voice speaks to one million people across the globe. My wow. God. Oh, wow. It's a giant ass play. Oh my God, gold plated. Dear Mr. Ridgeway, we are juggies. We are subscribers to your son Jesse's YouTube channel. We are one million strong in counting, and we are just trying to help. I've been watching Jesse for quite some time now. Jesse's been working hard and trying to become a better person. He's inspired thousands of us. He's really trying to make a living doing what he loves. And all he needs is support. We have been that for him and will continue to do so. Was there a clear point when I realized I was famous? Mm -hmm. When you when you get your first fan to come up and say, hey, you know, I love what you do, and you start to think, I have no idea who this person is. They, they're talking to me like I'm their best friend. That's a surreal concept. I don't think even to this day, after a few years, it processes. People, people have a specific term for it, YouTube famous or internet famous. My mom used to keep a chart by the uh, computer all the time about how, uh, you know, how his numbers were. I keep track daily about the number of his subscribers and the number of views. When it hits a billion, your mind doesn't even go that big. It scares me in a sense that you're in a town of about 1,300 people and nothing happens like that around here. My YouTube channel's known now because of Jesse. Like before that, I only had like maybe 300 people subscribed to me, and then all of a sudden, 100,000 people followed me in like one day, and it was just absolutely mind blowing. It's Christmas 2015. I have a present down here for my parents, which is uh, some money. Some money, thanks to you guys, the Psycho Series. So I'm paying it back to them. They have no idea they're receiving it, so I'm gonna get some footage of that. Also, it's the final Psycho Series Rigid Studios contract. Let's go celebrate Christmas, Juggies. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. All right. This is, a, this is a group gift here. Damn, you went to the same uh, rapping school I did. Yeah.
What? <laughs> I wrote my mom and daddy a check for $32,500. Oh, yeah. Damn, this is worse when you watch Marley and me. This is wonderful, Jesse. Thank you so much. Yep. Well, thank you. If you're pulling like millions of views each month, that translates into a lot of money. All right. So it's winter time, keeping it frigid, and it seems we've sprung a leak. We have a whistleblower, Jeffrey's ex-girlfriend. We refer to her as Kate. Uh, she was in Psycho Dad Raid's stream. She even had her own penultimate psycho video, Psycho Girlfriend Breaks iPad. You're being crazy. I'm being fucking crazy! Being I'm being shit. fucking crazy! Holy Fuck you, Jeff! Fuck you! Fuck you. Fuck you. Holy Jesus. crap! Holy crap! Siobhan and I had dated for roughly two to three years. Her and my brother broke up, and she took to Twitter and told everyone the videos were fake. She said I was super tense. <laughs> she said I was rude. She compared me to Jeffrey Baratheon on Game of Thrones. I don't know if you know that character, but he's a little whiny bitch. She promised that it would never come out. She promised my brother like that. Like, even if they broke up, that would never be a thing. And I don't know. It just comes as a slap to the face. Just told, told Corn about the leak yeah. craziness. Uh, Jeffrey just pulled in. Uh, this is a little more behind the scenes. I have this hunch, I have this feeling, here's where Jeffrey's gonna come in and be like, motherfucker, he's gonna be real pissed. Oh my God, I know. <laughs> I wanted to snap her fucking, <laughs> fucking body. She was the only one on the inside that had kind of like turned against us. I ran a show, Fan Mail Monday. Look at this, guys. Look at the amount of fan mail I got. Every YouTuber would open a P.O. box and do fan mail. Somebody want to read this for me? For a full year, and then it resulted in my dad burning all the fan mail. These were kids, and they would feel bad for me because they'd see my character lose a console or video games, so they would actually send these things in to replace them. This is like seven months' worth of fan mail video game accumulation. That put me in a difficult spot because I couldn't openly address that fact without breaking character, I, I would tell them in every single family, do not send me anything, do not send me money, do not send me electronics, do not send me anything of value. I want fan art, I want letters, but they'd still send it anyway. So I sold them all, used that money to then buy consoles to give back to the viewers, and we had a few different giveaways. So we have three consoles, estimated resale value is over $1,000 worth of prizes for you guys. We were getting 30 to 40 calls a day, all times of the day and night. Our voicemail takes 299 calls at a time, and I was deleting it several times a day. I would get hundreds of messages. They try to disguise their voices. It's so funny. You can tell it's a kid, and they'll talk real deep. You can, you can answer. McCann's Farm, how may I help you? This is corn, really? How are you? I'm very good. He doesn't sound like corn, huh? Well, uh, I just got sick. Oh, oh you're sick. You have kind of an accent yeah. now, though. What's wrong? We yeah. were all sick. It just, my nose is stuff. Sinus infections uh, going sinuses. around. Could be allergies, could be allergies. You need some local honey? Yeah. We had an awful lot of people coming, saying they were delivering pizza. Someone just pull in and out. Jeez, this shit's been crazy. Like, there's a reason Psycho Dad says for security all the time, because, like, we're trying to get security cameras. We're getting a gate in February, because this shit's fucking ridiculous. You guys just come to the house and dangerous. This gate was installed not only to make this place seem like a prison for the story, but to keep people out. I would say every weekend or every other weekend, we would get some sort of visitor. <laughs> That's the driveway alarm. I mean, I need, I need to check this out. Yeah, we, yeah, we can, somebody's out, yeah. Looks like there's two people literally outside of the car. They might be walking up. We got to talk about them? Interesting timing, guys. What's your name, man? Noah. Noah? Jess? What's your name? <laughs> Nate? Nate and Noah? Yeah. Good to see you guys. You guys live around here? No. No? no we're from Maryland. Maryland. Down by uh, the airport. Oh, shit. How long was the drive? Three hours. Three hours? Who's, who we got here? My dad. It's your dad? Yeah. Does this happen all the time? 
This is pretty frequent. Hey, what's up, Dad? Hey, thanks for being cool. Hey, no problem, man. Come on. Yeah. Is this the guy that was interviewing you in your trailer? Yeah, he uh, he tracked me down. What's up, Dad? Hey, man. Hey, man. So look, they've been talking about coming out here for a year and a half or so. But this is cool, man. You guys are really cool. And beautiful country down here. Thanks. Hey, you guys want to hang on real quick? I got some uh, bracelets in the house for you. Right, yeah. Free merch, can't, can't go wrong can't, there. No, can't be. Hey, man, thanks a lot. <laughs> hey, no problem. Hey, you guys want to come along? Let's <laughs> do uh, You guys can, uh, I guess, come on in. Why not? Uh, bracelets. Oh, you know what? It's all downstairs. The bracelets are downstairs. You guys get to see downstairs, too. She, zoo. The safe. The safe, yeah. <laughs> you guys want 30 grand? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I saw the DS. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of props floating around here. There you go, guys. You guys got a tour unlike any other. So I hope you feel special. That was the first time I really let anyone in the house, and it was just... It's surreal to me. Hey there, Juggies. It's Joel Pound with Juggernauts here. This is a very serious video, one I've been putting off for a long time. I am the king of hate comments, that's for damn sure. You're a dickhead, Jess. Stop making videos and go kill yourself right now. Fuck you, butch-ass, cunt-legging, asshole-fingering bitch. You are such a dick, you should just die. 10 points for originality. I have had to deal with online hate a lot um, because of Jesse. I would get hate because of my appearance. I think anytime there's a girl on camera. I actually think that the haters have been the hardest thing to deal with through this whole entire thing. And it was just the most ridiculous statements like, you know, fuck you and your whole family, hate you guys. I figured I'd drop one tonight about Uncle Larry. When me and you had that little altercation, I owned you, man, owned you. So, Larry, you can go fuck yourself. I want to hit somebody. See, back in my day, it's like, if you had a confrontation with somebody, we drop gloves and we fight and, and then we move on. But with social media, it's different. There's, there's nobody to punch. It's like, and I told Jesse, I said, I'm fucking punching at air. The comments are, uh, you know, degrading, death threats, things like that. It's just, it, it's just sad, so I quit watching. Everybody hates me now. I knew it was coming. I was just, it just, this is one of those shitty moments. There was so much hate coming down on me at the time that I wanted to quit YouTube. But then all of a sudden, I get this letter in the, in the mail, and it was from somebody from Paris. They got shot in the Paris attack, and their friend actually got killed. And they were in the hospital, and they had no hope. But the one saying that I have is no hate needed, just love, and that meant so much to them. And you know, after that, how can I quit for somebody like that, that I, I impacted somebody from frickin' France? I'm not the only one affected by this. I mean, Jeffrey looks like a freaking asshole. My mom's the only one that looks good. My dad looks like the biggest dick bag in the world, but he's not. He's the greatest guy in the world, his biggest sweetheart. The fact that he's helping me with these videos, um, insane. Did I ever feel trapped? Yes. Every video that came on, I felt trapped. My husband's starting to quit a lot, a lot. The only reason why he stuck with this whole thing is because he loves his son and he would do anything for Jesse. Today is the day that everybody gets really, really pissed off at us in general. Um, I'm talking about the incineration of the fan mail. I'm not pouring gasoline on it and then incinerating why? it because then every paper and cardboard fly everywhere. I was in politics in Pittsgrove Township, served as mayor, and was on council for 14 years. My father was invest investigated to say whether or not his participation in these videos misrepresents the government for which he works for in any way. So yeah, we flipped out. I flipped out. You can't. We're renegade filmmakers. Who I cares know. what you can't do? This yeah, is. I know, but. There's still I'll take any heat, literal heat. I'll take any heat. Yeah, you can, but they see one person doing it, me. We just had a huge family discussion um, where my dad was worried about losing his job. This is not some good publicity he's receiving, and it makes him look pretty bad. We had a hacking situation back in September where um, my friend Corin's password was guessed by using security questions, and not only did all of our numbers get leaked, but he got all the social medias hacked. I have a screenshot still on my phone of right after my number went live, I think there's like over 2,000 text messages, hundreds of missed calls on this thing. The next day, I had to go and change my number. The only worry that I have is that some crazy fan does something to him, hurts him in some way. Luna, what are you growling at? See your reflection? Somebody out there? Are you kidding me? to the back door. 
Yo, this woman legit is trying the fucking doorknob. Come on. I'm not, either I'm not here or I do not want to be bothered. Either way, you bypass the fucking gate. She's literally taking, she's taking a fucking selfie of my bedroom windows. Look what just happened to um, Christina Grimmie. And, you know, 20, she's, tw I think she's 23 too. And it, they said it was an obsessed fan. Investigators are trying to understand why a heavily armed man opened fire on a young pop star just as she finished what would become her final performance. As we started to get more into it, paranoia would grow more and more. There was a lot of times I was worried about my security because there was a lot of death threats over the internet, things like that pertaining to me. But, you know, you're more worried as a father, you're more worried about your family. You're not, you know, you gotta sacrifice yourself to, you know, to make things right with your kids and your family and your wife and protect them. The world is crazy, and we're kind of isolated here for the most part. There was even one video in particular where me and Corn hacked the security cameras, and we find that my dad is outside in the yard with a gun. That is a very real revolver that he has, and we used it in one of the psycho videos. Look at him fucking loading up this gun. What the fuck is this shit? I don't want to see my dad doing this stuff. If, he, if he's fucking killing people, I don't want to fucking know about it. That was there used as a story moment, but also do not come to this property because my dad could fucking shoot you. And uh, what kind of bullets are we using here? These are 38 specials. They don't look like a standard bullet, do they? We dealt with the police a lot. Like a lot. <laughs> I had a huge live stream, with tens of thousands of viewers. Some asshole decides to call the police. And the SWAT team comes. And I look out my windows in the living room, and I see six cop cars I didn't know what the, I, I just thought they were cars. I thought somebody had called the pizza delivery guy on us because to do a fake delivery, because that was pretty common during stream. And the cars just kept coming. It was like one, two, three. And then I'm like, where the hell are they going? What's going on? Next thing you know, I see one go into the grass in the front yard, and I see a giant spotlight come through the glass. We were sitting in the living room, and my first thought was, oh my God, it's an obsessed fan, and they want to take him away. Jesse Ridgeway come out with your hands up. And I was like, oh my God, my mom and dad, my mom is already freak a leaking And I go out, they want me outside. And the cops start, I, I already see a barrage of like pistols and shotguns already lined up. You know, they got formation. I decided to lay down, hands over my head. And next thing you know, I, I am like glancing out of the corner of my eye up and I see shotgun barrels and pistols like right there at me. We were trying to tell them what YouTube was. Jesse was YouTube famous. There were, you know, he's streaming. This is something that's called swatting. And they seemed like they never heard of it. Oh, they're like, stay on the fucking ground. Don't you fucking move. To see Jesse down there, it was horrible. Absolutely horrible. For probably a month, maybe more, we didn't even feel safe in our own house. That they could just come in and do that. It just, I don't know, it really, It really bothered. Did you think maybe it was time to ask Jesse to end the series? No, I would never ask him that. But it wasn't his fault. They got swatted how many times? I think 11 times. When you hear the police scars, you wonder if they're being swatted. I never knew what swatted was before this. <laughs> As we went along, I wanted to raise the bar and raise the stakes. Let's start to delve a little deeper into these characters in this relationship. I don't know if you can tell right now just by looking at me, but I'm, I'm flipping. I'm, I'm short circuiting on the inside. We're um, about to go through Psycho Mom Divorces Husband, and um, this, is, this is the heaviest video to date. They have the strongest love relationship of any of our friends I've ever seen. They back each other all the time. I mean, he and I do too, but yeah, I feel know. like I don't even have too many friends. Their parents are still together. Nobody does that. No parents would be willing to show a divorce just for a YouTube series. I was so scared. The night before, I had butterflies in my stomach. And he told me, I want you to be Samuel 
MF Jackson. Let his verbal aggression be the escalation towards the breaking point of saying, you're a psychopath. This is probably the most important thing of the whole entire video. You need to get this. Do you know what you're gonna say? We don't wanna script everything, make it seem natural. Like as you're coming out, you know, that could be saying, I'll change, I'll change all along this. No, Jeff, you're a psychopath. Hit my mark, go in, no. No, no, erase that from your head. Remember, this is just a, a guide. This isn't what I want. That was extremely challenging. I remember my mom and dad, they like, they kissed before we shot it. Wish us luck. Maybe this video don't even exist because we failed miserably. No, it's gonna exist whether we like it or not. <laughs> All right, don't you have to. Yeah, wait, wait, here we go. Oh. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> and the destruction in that video happens before the meat of the dialogue. So my mom had to divorce him after the destruction's already done. So she could have very easily fucked up and we we would have been out the divorce video. I felt so much pressure, but the, I don't know, everything the way he was telling me. And we did that in one take. One take. I can not do it anymore. Oh, come I'm on. Sick. You are a psychopath. I can't deal with you anymore. I'm a psychopath. Mom, I'm come on, please, please, please. And I was all pumped up. I had my adrenaline was going and and um, I thought it was wonderful. And then I get a phone call to come back to the house because it wasn't good enough. When we finished it, absolutely nailed it. My mom comes back and I was like, yeah, let's uh Let's pretend we, we didn't get it correctly. Let, let's make her think that it that was horrible. This is fucked up. <laughs> we gotta redo it like fast. Okay, and what what exactly was that? It was it was extremely rushed and it didn't seem like the I wanted the force line was really like that much different than your other yells. <laughs> and I was like, what? It wasn't good enough. I think you should watch it back. And then they they smiled and let me let me go. Well, yeah, we're just kidding. It was really good. <laughs> you are so ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that was good. That was I thought it was all around. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> this is all divorce. Divorce. Yeah. We got divorce. What you guys don't realize is that she had to hide every single day of her life from November up until we just finished a series. Mom's hiding out in the bedroom, cause she, you know, she lives here. Dogs. That sucks, that's what happens when you get written off a series. When I came home from work, I didn't want people seeing my car pull into the driveway. After the divorce, my mom just cannot be seen at this house. Yeah, you can come back and hide. It's been really difficult to hide her things every single time we just want to film like a vlog. <laughs> When's that gonna be done? Well, there's chicken in the oven, probably 5.30. I mean, you just had a lid on that and the light the light off. I'd go into the bathroom, the basement, in the dark, uh, just waiting till a couple times they forgot me. They forgot to tell me that it all clear. They even had friends in their actual life come up to them and say, you know, How, how's Jeff? Or, or how's Terry? Like, is it final? My wife and I have been married almost 30 years, and, and we've done everything together. He didn't like people thinking that I was available. They would say, um, so do you see your wife much? He, he didn't like the fact that we couldn't go out anywhere. He was stressed. Both of them were trying to eat dinner and be divorced <laughs> and have a good time while somebody's watching them knowing they're not divorced. Do that for a year. What do you think your spouse would do? It's, it's not good. We always looked at each other and you know said, you know, you know, we'll, we'll get through one day and then we'll get to the next day, things like that. That's that's how we got through it all. I got really upset with him because he was just really obsessive with his work. I did not have a life. I did two videos a day and I played, not myself, I played a spoiled brat uh, who was slowly losing his mind and had a fucked up family life. I am legitimately fighting with my dad. Things are legitimately getting destroyed. The And, and if you know, I mean, it, clearly it's all legit because sometimes I think it's legit myself. It's fuck. It's fucky, guys. It's real fucky. When it got to a point where we were up, we were doing uploads every day. We couldn't go anywhere without the camera. I thought Halloween was supposed to be scary. I don't get it. This is my favorite part of Christmas. 
We couldn't have fun. We couldn't really go to the mall, go to dinner without vlogging it. I didn't want to feel like I was performing all the time. Uh, this is a psycho behind the scenes, I guess. Um, I'm really, this is legitimate. Uh, you see the real Jess right now. Um, me and Juliet just broke up, and it's pretty hard on me, and it's not because it was a breakup. I mean, obviously that hurts a lot, but it's because of why. It's because of this fucking series. It feels wrong that I'm choosing this story, YouTube, over, over spending time with her, but it's just like, I need to keep going and I, I can't stop. I mean, there's no way out. <laughs> there's no way out. I saw, I think at that point, like how much I meant to him, and I think he saw how much he meant to me. Georgie uh, started doing videos uh, for his channel. He started doing pranks and things. Everybody loved pranks on yeah. Aunt Melissa. Those are fun, but uh. No, they weren't. We'll let you out! I swear to God! April Fools! April Fools! It's a joke! April Fools! Get this bounce out of there right now! I told you never to do that to me! I told you never! There was one prank in particular that doesn't exist on YouTube. I'm outside raking leaves, and all of a sudden I feel spaghetti being poured on my head, sauce, and then all I can say is it felt like I had boiling water poured on my head. Well, come to find out, he had put a, like, little cherry bomb or a sparkler next to me so that when he poured the food on me, it would scare me, you know, make me jump, and I'd run. But after he poured the spaghetti sauce, he poured flour, not knowing that flour was flammable. It hit the cherry bomb spark and went up like a bomb right up my face. But I had first and second degree burns from here under. Ended up at Crozier Burn Center two days later. They had to literally scrape the dead skin off my face. And I still, there's my bangs still growing in from March. But yeah, I never even watched it because as soon as it happened, I like sprinted back upstairs when she was in the shower and I just deleted it before I could ever watch it because just what I seen was just like probably the worst thing I've ever seen because it's horrible. This is where the Jesse versus dad plot line ends. Um, it's like a kid kills father. The majority of my problem is the portrayal of the killing online. That was my biggest concern. We both had problems with the killing, but he, he wasn't going to change. Nobody was going to change his mind. I was dead set against the bad publicity he was going to bring on our family. I was ready to walk away from it at that point. And Jesse got so pissed at us, me and his dad, he went in the room, just stayed away from us because we were trying to talk him out of actually killing him. My biggest concern is finishing this story. If I don't, if I'm unable, which I swear to God, I'll make it so that I am able, even if I have to go to fucking jail for it. All right, ready? And here we go. Okay. What the fuck you got that gun for? I knew you had it. You know, I really hope you're not gonna act it like that, but you know. What do you want? I'm just saying, I know it's like, I know, but it's scary for me because, like, that could be your legitimate response, be. which is scary, which we'll have to do 20,000 retakes if that's the case. Oh, yeah, right. I'll, I'm going to trust your ability, but remember, you know, this but is you not. You said, uh, not 100%. I know, it's I know. Through your line. But, like, <sighs> you're so wishy washy, though, it seems. Like, my problem right, is, right. Yes. I don't like a freaking fake or even a real There you go. Then, then that's good. It's real. Because it, it doesn't have the orange thing in it. I can see the bullet, the whole, the uh, shell chamber. Good. Open. Then tell me to put that fucking shit. Platoon leader status. Platoon. All right, ready? But don't do it right now. Just I want you to know that. Platoon leader, when we actually do the real deal. Your son has a gun on okay. you. Don't stand for that. There was a lot of sleepless nights uh, getting up to that, that finale, just, just worrying about it. I should have never showed you those video games. Look what it made you. It was you. You. You made me this way. You made me this way. Jesus fucking Christ, Jesse, what are you doing? Back the fuck up. Back the fuck up. We were working when the video came out, it was like in the afternoon, and the phone immediately went off. 
that everybody calling us to ask us from other countries, asking us to call the police, and that, you know, somebody needs to go and help Jesse's father. Then I think I text Jesse and said, uh, what the heck did you do? Wow, my mind is fried right now. You guys, you know, from the outside, I know there's gonna be a lot of you that love this series and that love the characters and everything and are gonna be very saddened by what happens. You have no idea what it's like from the inside perspective. We've gotten messages uh, about the nature of the series. Dear Ridgeway family, I actually believed that your son, Jesse Ridgeway, was in danger. And this is a call from someone who was actually beaten by her parents and was actually traumatized throughout her youth, and this whole time, I was supporting all of you, trying to pray that you had a healthy family. There's a special place in hell for you. I was really worried because I know Jesse has a lot of little kids that look up to him. Police dispatch. Hi, is this the Elmer Police Department? This is the Elmer Borough Police Department. Are you calling in reference to McJuggernugget? Well, I have a question. I just come home from work. Both of my children watch this guy okay. on TV. Let me, let me, before you even start, they do it for entertainment purposes only. The police are aware of that, so they're trying to uh, do something about it. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to explain to my kids. I don't have a problem with kids being in, in general on YouTube, but I don't think half the half the shit that they watch, they should be watching. Um, my kids are not allowed to watch it, and I told Jesse that when we started, and he was okay with that. And he's like, I don't blame you. You're a good mom. Yeah, they, your kids shouldn't watch it if you don't think they should. I think the series finale that Jesse had was pretty cool. Um, I know Jeff had an issue with being killed off like that, but I think it was cool how he ended it, where they fled to Switzerland. So what happened with corn? The vegetable or the person? Corn was uh, Jesse's right-hand man there for a while and uh, decided he had other ventures that he wanted to pursue, and they decided to uh, leave one hour uh, before Switzerland to uh, text a person an hour before a trip that it was all paid for, including meals, train ride, air, everything. It was very unprofessional. And uh, I wasn't a, uh, I wasn't very fond of what he did. I don't know if he grew to resent Jesse. All we can do is make assumptions because they don't talk. I mean, he texted him that he wasn't coming. So he was right at the finish line. He didn't even give me any sign, any any warning that this is how he's feeling. And he was the only freaking guy that was getting paid out of everybody. And to do that to everybody, it was like a big fuck you to the whole family. Guys, that's Uncle Larry sleeping on the couch right there. It's literally like 2.30, 3 in the morning. And um, I just uploaded Sick of Kid Flea's Country. I tried to make you proud. You said I had my head in the clouds. I've spent a lifetime stuck in the same line. I was glad when we went to Switzerland because I knew once I got to Switzerland, it was over. Jesse filmed his fleeing the country, and that was just absolutely perfect. It was the best video. It's my new favorite now. I have some favorites. That is my new favorite. We had calls from police friends of ours saying there was a lot of calls coming in, you know, pertaining to the shooting. So Jesse was scrambling the best he could, you know, with what the capabilities he had there in Switzerland to get that next video up quickly. And then he laid the camera down after he did that heartfelt thing and went, that's a wrap. Do not forget to keep it rigid. That's it, everyone. That's a wrap. Sweet, we're done. Yes, sir. All right. ah, yes, thank you guys. That's crazy. Woo! Fucking last one, man. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Where's Dad at? He's right here. I love you, Dad. I love you, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> and there's the dad. Oh, that honestly. Okay. Wow! I love you too. I love you too. I've been waiting for that! I don't want to 
want to turn off the video. It's just like my character. I, I don't want to turn off the video because uh, and tomorrow's going to come and it's not going to be tonight. The magic of tonight. Um, I'm just so proud of Juliet. Uh, her song, so fucking good. I'm going to tuck the camera away, look at some more uh, reaction videos and comments because I just, I can't get enough. All right, guys, I love you to death. And do not forget to keep it rigid. First, second week in June was going to be the out. That was going to be the finale, and you know things would be done and 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 be back to semi-normal by then. What if it wasn't over? What if it wasn't over? I'd be okay with it, but I don't think Jeff would, unless it went a different way. Building the Morton. Got uh, one of my dad's many mowers. This is a hustler. Got the backhoe. Uh, Jeffrey's new motorcycle after I submerged the first doing? one. So that's, uh, we're, I'm bringing them in here to show props and whatnot. Uh, uh, there's a lot to just show. Walk there. Oh, yeah, I know. Hey, what are you doing? Trying to clean the hell up. No, no, no. You're like, you're, you're, st you're still psycho dad. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. It's hard to get out of the thing. Well, because the, camera, the cameras yeah, are on. Yeah, you're well, like, yeah, you're I, was like always, I was always told when the camera's on, I got to act like that. All right, well, so you... this long, okay? Take it down. You can be, all right, all right. You can be yourself. I'm trying. It's, it's tough. okay. You know, after this long. I know. You know yourself, though. Yeah. All right. My dad's that. backhoe here. This has been the number one tool of destruction right here. So we use this for the demolition of this gaming room, destroying the trailer, destroying Eagle's Landing. What the hell's that? No, it's just I haven't opened this in a while. You know, it's just it's almost like you're putting money into a bank account. And then eventually you look into it and you're like, oh, wow, holy shit, there's a lot of stuff in here. Except this actually means something. Psycho Kid crushes PS4, or we drug it behind the truck in the uh, open road. Why not? This, this is the one that got destroyed in the very first one. Oh, that's the original. And this is the one that we tested the chainsaw out on and went into the pool and even went into the back of the Montero. You got to save that one. How does it feel to walk through all this work, all these memories? Uh, it's cool. No, it's really great to go back and look at all this stuff. So what's your plan now? Like, where do you go from here? Yeah, I'm going to cut. Go ahead, cut. I just need to take a second. <laughs> I knew it was going to hit him. I knew it was going to be rough on him. How, like, what, how was he in Switzerland? Was he a little? He was kind of, in, in my opinion, between characters. He was still trying to be his character, and he was trying to let loose. And yeah, it was hard to, for, during the videos to watch him. I mean, me, I had a very easy character. You know, I, I just come in with, with anger and, and de demolish things. But he had the emotional aspect. You know, he had a, he had a father in the videos that was trying to uh, literally terrorize him, and uh, it, you know, and he, he struggled with that. Me, I could cut off and, and go, uh, go do my own thing, but it was rough on him. And then all his fans, you know, were trying to, um, you know, support him and things like that, you know, because uh, he had a, a dickhead for a dad, so. It was rough. It was rough on all of us, but more so on him. Jesse? What's up, Brian and cameras? We're all starting hey. between you and me, huh? You two were 24. Not yeah. That long ago. Yeah, and it's a lot different now, isn't it? I don't know, it's just... This is a fucking really good thing. Like, I was making a lot of money. Two videos a day. Not that it was about that, but... Fans loved it, I loved it, my family, you know, was supportive of it. I'd be a fucking idiot just to let something like that go and, and try and move on to something that I don't even know if it's gonna be better. Yeah, I just wanna talk to you guys. Oh. Um, so, series is over and been thinking a lot you know we're going to vidcon we could maybe hop on this variety show thing 
and do a live confessional in front of uh, some people at VidCon. It would mean a lot to the fans because they still have a lot of questions. We get introduced, we come on live, you know, on stage in front of a whole bunch of people, cameras and everything. What are you talking, a whole the, bunch of people? So well, you... at VidCon, there's a main stage, right? And there's a, like a few thousand people. I'm not so going to with a few thousand people. And this is something that, that Brian thinks would be good. I think it could but be good. But you know how for... I feel in front yeah. of people. I don't want to be up there in front of them yeah, and then say he, I'm a liar. You would be leading us. Yeah, no, I, I mean, know we'd be leading us, but I don't want to be up there and do that. We've came this far. This is a good tribute to the, to the end of the series, and we can but do it for every... But it's ended. But it's for every... Yeah, and this is how we end it. Everything that you've done, you can't just do one more thing? I'd be the biggest fucking idiot if we just ended the series at probably our highest point. I've been thinking a lot. The fans have come to me. They said, "Hey, why are you ending it, Jess? Like we're concerned. The, the fan, the, this resonated with the fans so much. I don't know what I'm going to do." Your mother and I went out to breakfast for the first time in eight months. The end of the series was the killing. What if we had another year? You just said we... it. The end of the series. It ended yeah. for me. You know how I was. I don't. Every think it's... episode, I had issues. Would you guys do? Would you guys? Would you guys do another year? A year? Mom would do it. Mom would do it. I want my life back. I, I don't think we need to holler anymore. That's the only thing he, he pays attention to. I'd love to keep it going. It was so successful and the fans loved it. And just being at VidCon and it's like, I just want them to come on stage with me. I think that would be good for the fans and us. And I know we're, we're uh, running out of time, but I want to talk to my dad and I want to, I want to get my whole family in on this. Hey, Dad. What's up? Um, look, I just wanted to talk about everything that happened. But you do you know what exactly happens this whole time span of what we all went through as I know, a family? I know, I know. And, and Brian, with, with his uh, film project here, I, I, I've been t taking witness to everybody's interviews and everybody has made sacrifices. I just wanted to say I was sorry for how I handled it. You don't have to it. apologize and, to me. And, and the fact that you're here right now, it seems like you don't even want to be here. You've I've done this whole series. long and hard about this. If this is what you want, I know we've been through, you know, hell and back for mm -hmm. this series for you, but if this is what you want, I said, you know, we can do it. We can do it. We can, we can do what? I'll give you one more year. Do I like it? Is it what I really want? No, but for you, I'll do it. I, I just need to let it go, and, and we can all go back to our normal lives. I'm done. This, this is something that I need to do for you guys and for the fans, too. I'll do this for you, too. All right? Thank you. I love you. I too. Less than a week ago, Jesse wouldn't come out of his house and talk to just me. Now, he was about to talk to thousands of his fans coming clean face to face. Anything could happen. When we, when we jokingly smashed the Xbox and we're making fun of Freak Out videos, I did not think we would be here right now, this day, three and a half years later. Makes zero sense. It's kind of surreal. Yeah. It's a funny thing, this life business. <laughs> it's time to run. It's time to run if anyone's feeling it. Man. Thanks for letting me in, family. Thank you. I know it was a weird show. Yeah. showing up. Yeah. I wish you all the best. Yeah. Yeah. Take your Come on. Yeah, everybody here. Love you guys. Love
announcement. But before I do anything, I just want my family to come out. Please join me. Dad, Mom, Jeffrey, Uncle Larry, Juliet. This is my whole family and my girlfriend, and we've put on something called the Psycho Series. We've done it for three and a half years. It's gotten over a billion views, and the whole thing was fake. I just wanted to take this moment to apologize for anyone who was hurt or betrayed by watching these videos because you believed it. But I just want you to know that we all love our fans so much. And I know I was the hated character, but, woo! but I thank everybody for following my son. It's been, a, it's been bittersweet, but it's coming to an end. But we thank you greatly for all your support. I gotta hug my dad real quick on stage because without all these people, this series would not have been possible. And everybody out there, love your family to death because they are your true supporters and all your friends. Anyone who believes in what you do and what you want to do, hold them tight because that's why we're all here right now is because of our passion and our hearts and follow it till you die. I love you, Dad. was the overall message of the series? To be nice to your kids so they don't turn cycle. He served as a great example of what not to do. Yeah. He brought us closer That's together. That's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. true. Oh, don't believe everything you see on the internet. <laughs> That's actually a good one. The people can have it bad sometimes, but they can have help throughout it, and they can make it through. David. David. Nice to meet you, dude. Yo, what's up, guys? What's your name, man? Uh, Chase. Chase? Chase, you got a YouTube channel? Mm -hmm. Nice. I just hit 2,000 subscribers. Like Dude, really? Dude, congrats, man. Dude, that's awesome. I'm happy that it's all done. You know, uh, you know, I don't have to worry about, you know, people looking at me funny in the streets, you know, and say, hey, is he a psycho? Is he not a psycho? Who the hell knows? We were all prisoners to the series, as ridiculous as that sounds. Was it all worth it? So worth it, though. <laughs> I'm excited to have Jesse back a little bit. <laughs> Uncle Larry, before this series, he would never be in any videos. I was like, what if you had your own YouTube channel? And I guess he decided, hey, being in front of the camera isn't that bad, and I could probably get used to it. He got me involved with it, and we started up the channel. Hello, welcome to the lounge. I'm Uncle Larry. Spill it, why? I just think no! Fine. Suddenly, he's got his own fucking channel with half a million subscribers, and he's on Twitter. He had Instagram for a little bit, and he's talking with fans. He's got his own merchandise line. Jesse kind of showed us what YouTube could be. Welcome to the McCann's Farm channel. I'm Nancy. And I'm Anita. As long as your root system is good, you're going to have uh, good plants. You guys got 104,000. That's within 24 hours. I now have a channel. <laughs> I decided, fuck him, I'm going to start my own channel. So, welcome to it. Tom and I, relationship, because of the channel and everything, has grown tremendously. We are two minds formed in this one channel, and that's, that's how it runs. He doesn't play sports. I love sports. He doesn't love the outdoors. I love the outdoors. His whole thing is social media, and he loves that. And this actually brought us together. I got into his world a little bit, and he got into mine. Would you do it all over again? Would I do it all over again? No. <laughs> really? <laughs> I would never, ever, I would never do this again. It was so fucking hard. But would I, well, I wouldn't do all that over again. I would, you know, maybe continue it somehow. I, it was a big part of our lives for so long. Of course we're gonna miss it. A father, a mother, whatever the case may be, can't ask for a better situation where you have everybody involved in the family nucleus for one goal and making these videos. People wish for things like this to happen where their family's this close. I'm, uh, I'm very thankful. I'm not special. I, I'm nobody special. I, 
the whole reason I made this series was because my life was so boring. I wanted, I wanted to make up a fake life that you guys could enjoy. I feel so um, grateful for everything that's been given, you know, doing YouTube. I had 200 subscribers for seven whole years and I did it just because I loved it so much. I have to move on and I have to let go. I know some people probably think we're crazy that, you know, to do something like what we've done. But um, I would do it again in a heartbeat. This is bigger than you and me. You will see the crowd swelling in. Sky and the strong battle cry.